Welcome back to the Big Bass Dreams podcast. Special guest in the house here. We're not in Minnesota anymore. We're not, man. We're not. Feels like it, though, kind of. <laughs> Got my friends here, Josh and Bree Douglas. Hi. For those of you guys that are under some kind of rock and don't know, Josh is a touring bass. What would you like to call yourself, man? Like, I guess a bass pro. I almost feel like that's, that term isn't fair to use anymore. It's like limiting. It is limiting. Because to me, you're more than just a bass pro. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I like that. It is awesome. It is. It is. Yeah. Try to do a lot of things in the fishing. It all relates back to fishing, though. That's it is. Sure. Always. Re- you're just a fisher. Comes back to a bass yeah. some way or another. But yeah, man. Try to be a jack of all trades and do some guiding, some video stuff. Okay. And of course, try to catch them. Very cool. Very cool. And, and those of you guys that don't know what Bree does, you want to fill them in on your role here? Uh, yeah, I pretty much run all of Josh's media. I do his photos and his videos and all the edits and, um... She's the real hammer around here, yeah. that's for sure. I'm, I'm not, not posting his stuff, but I'm doing all the other... I'm making all the videos and, and she media She's as good with the camera in her yeah. hand, that's for sure. Right, absolutely. What, what stands out to me is your content generation. Obviously, you guys are a, a team mm-hmm. and do very well at it, so... Glad to have you guys here, and we're going to talk about some Big Bass Dreams related topics and just fishing and awesome. uh, share with our audience your awesome personalities, because cool. you guys are a hoot to hang out with, and uh, this is the side of, of the fishing world that I feel the audience wants to, a little bit more access to. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. here we are. Bree, do you do any fishing too? Mm-mm. No. Okay. No, I mean, I can hang on the boat, but I can't, I can't fish like him all day long. I mean, I'll, Very I'll, few people can. I'll throw a cast. I mean, I'll definitely, if he's on a big bite or something like that, then I'll definitely throw something in. But if it's going to be a long day and it's clearly a struggle, then no, I'm, on, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> she, she, cuddles out. She cuddles with the dog yeah, the whole we time, all got the checks dog the video. There, you know. Matter of fact, uh, one time we got on the lax, put her on a 5.1, 5.1 smallie on a bed. And then she never made another cast the rest of the day. <laughs> I mean, a the five People magazine came out. One and done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, you know. Kudos to you. And I had to get work done, yeah. you know. I hear that. I hear fun that. and get back to it. Well, Josh, this question is going to be directed at you then, my friend. Tell me about the one that got away. We oh, all got man. one. Yeah, I, I got way too many ones that got away to think about it. Um, uh, there's two of them in particular. Both of them are smallmouth. Okay. Um, yeah, break it down, man. Just Yeah. Bring us back on the deck of that boat with a, you know, with you. And yeah, one of them was Bree's fault for sure. I was on uh, nice. Lake Chickamauga of all okay. places, and I was throwing a big swim bait. I did well. I ended up doing really well in that tournament. Took a top ten at Chickamauga in a Bass Open, mostly throwing a big swim bait. And uh, I was in practice, and you always get the biggest bites when you're on the phone. Okay, there's something about it. I think you're just not doing anything with the bait or something like that, and then they they just eat it. So. I was throwing this bait and I was talking to Bree like this and I'm just reeling, I'm starting to kind of get a bite and it's kind of lean like this. I'm reeling, like, yep, kind of feels big, but it's coming at me. And Chickamauga used to be largemouth. And all of a sudden I went, it was a line through that I was using and I see the fish, I'm like, oh, it's a big small and it went to boat flip it. And my 15 pound test broke. And the fish, when I realized how big it was and he broke right away, it was like a seven or eight pound smallmouth. It was a, the, one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. They've got giant oh, smallies man, in that part the Tennessee of the River will yeah. start taking over in that area just because they eat big gizzard chat and stuff just like that one wanted but that one uh, the, the cool thing was that was molly bait i was waiting for more to show up and when it when it broke off i saw the fish and then i watched the line through land hit the side of my gun and then fall back in my boat but then the in your boat gone. yeah it came back through so i still had that ended up using that bait to win some money but my the one that haunts me the most honestly was uh lake erie uh tournament I had out there I had a good day I had like 22 something pounds and it was at the end of the day I stopped I was over fishing by uh, Peely Island and I went to one more spot on my way back I throw a drop shot in there and what a boat had just jumped up to start everyone's starting to go back so he had just jumped up so I threw it right in his wake and as I go to pick up my line I can see my chartreuse line just kind of moving this way 
I'd, everything I'd landed that day off, so I like set the hook and bzz, I'm like, man, that feels like a really big one. We could use nets then, so my co angler comes with the net and he's sitting there and he's jumping, he's just doing like these jumps, but he's so big or small, he can't oh, jump. Yeah. And right away, and that guy was kind of local, and he's like, that's like a seven or an eight, dude. And that's like, you know, I've catched some sixes and stuff like that, but I've never caught a seven before. That's my unicorn, right? That's the one I want. And it, it was all of seven pounds. And as he's reaching for the net, I have him like this, and the fish does one little pullback, and it feels like he just pulls off. I'm like, no. Oh. I was just so disappointed. I didn't care about the tournament. That was by far the biggest bass. He had so much weight ever. Well, when I went to put on a new little jackal cross tail shad, he broke my bit, my hook underneath the barb. So the barb probably stayed with him, and when he pulled back, he just broke the hook. And I, that, that hook, I won't even say the company's name, it was a, it's a great company. Never have I ever had that happen before, but definitely That's wrong That time. was the biggest smallie I've ever had in my life, and that was a hard one to, I'm still chasing after him today. That one hurts. So, yeah, no, yeah, it was a... It was one of those you sit down, want to get off the water, don't want to go fishing no more. Yeah. yeah it was a tough one. But those, those are of hard course, the big ones break hooks, you know what I mean? Ugh, it was a tough one. That's savage, man. Tough one. Yeah. I don't know if I should keep asking these questions. No, <laughs> those were the two. Those were the two. I've had big largies, big spots, you know, big tournament ones that cost you a lot of money. Something like that, but There's something so, about the big smallmouth. Man, man, that's my favorite. Dude. Okay, that's the one. That's, that's that's you know I love them all, but yeah. that that one you know to get that seven pounder, that would be a big that would be a nice replica in my office. In my for shop, sure, for sure. Awesome. Oh man, <laughs> that's brutal. So you've got to do this at a pretty high level. Yeah. And obviously, you guys make your living and your, and your livelihood off of fishing. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any other loves mm -hmm. outside of the fishing? Obviously, you must. I mean, just, just yeah, lots of stuff. Uh, I, I love to cook. I love to bake. I love to knit. I love to, I, I'm a homebody. Women friends, still cook? Yeah, friends call me Martha. <laughs> <Good job>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't do that in L.A. <laughs> no, they don't do that. Go up to the north. We love it. Yeah. <laughs> we need the oven to stay warm most of the time. <laughs> Gotta cook oven. something. <laughs> Radioactive power plants, man. It gets cold up here. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you guys deal with it. Uh, but we got, we got a, we got a, we got a diesel yeah. truck in the lands. We just go to Florida. Uh -huh. when it gets too cold. I, I noticed that. that the last couple winters. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. We get out of there. Yeah. Bail out. How about you, Josh? Do you have any other loves besides the fishing? Uh, her. Oh, good her. answer. She's a good one. Good um, answer. She definitely keeps it running. Always supportive. Remember. I remember us like had no money. I was bartending. We we're just trying to make bills pay and all that. And I remember one time we saved up all of our money for like a thousand dollar Lawrence unit. And uh, the place we lived, I had to keep everything outside, right? Uh, I didn't have anywhere, so I'd take the grass off them all night. Well, I guided in the morning. I'd bartend at night, so I get in at like two thirty, hurry up, swap everything out, be to bartending by four, and I'd take the grass off every time. Well, I ran in, took a shower, all that, and I all of a sudden halfway to work and I had a sinking feeling. And I left that graph laying on the bumper of my Suburban. No. Uh, and that thing shattered all over the freeway somewhere. And I had to come home and explain to her after, I only had it two days, maybe. We saved up a lot of money to get that graph going to try to jumpstart my career and get things going. So definitely her. Uh, fishing is my love. I mean, that's basically all I do. I mean, that's about it. That's what I think about nonstop. That mm -hmm. says a lot. So what do you yeah. think it is about the fishing that just consumes your passion? Since I was a kid, I mean, I like all sports. I, you don't think you can tell me oh, I noticed that I don't you were like. Just, I mean, you're yeah. way into the Vikings game. Yeah, oh, of course, the Vikings. I'm a Minnesota guy. Unfortunately, love them. Or you don't really, you know, it's kind of more of a death sentence for us. But at I'm the same a Clipper fan, dude, so yeah, I mean, I can relate. You love what you love. Yeah. You know? No, I love all sports, but I'm extremely competitive. I can't get that out of me. But since I was a kid, there's something about the tug of a, fishing, a fish on a fishing pole. And then just trying to get, you know, just trying to figure them out. I mean, catching them's fun. Don't get me wrong, I love catching them. But it's way more rewarding when you find them. For me, it is. Uh, looking for them, putting in the time, and find them. And that whether I'm the one catching them or whether I'm guiding clients and I'm watching them catch 23-pound bags and that smile, that's what, to me, that's just what it's all about, man. So right. that's my number one love. Oh, sorry. Yeah. My way. Very cool. Very, mm -hmm. very cool. <laughs> so I think we're all about the same age. We're not going to talk about numbers. Um, but I'm kind of curious who your inf biggest influences were in fishing. Oh, They're yeah. Kind of like 
led Josh Douglas to be who he is today. Yeah, definitely. Al Lindner, a kid from Minnesota. Dude, so that's like, my dude. Al, Al to me is, is a god. You know what yeah. I mean? He, uh, from Minnesota, he just has what a god. You know, I love talking in front of the camera. Uh, I love to teach people. It's it's my pat fishing. I just like to talk about it and, and whatever. And Al had a knack for that, does have a knack for that. The whole Lindner family. Uh, James, all of them, to the kids and all of them. Even them. Troy. Yeah, even Troy. <laughs> yeah, even Troy. Yeah, no, all of them, Just man. Troy. They're uh, the whole Linder family, excellent fishermen, ambassadors of the sport. Yeah, they are. Uh, Hall of Famers all the way around in the whole thing. Uh, and then bass fishing, man, I mean, Greg Hackney. I mean, you t yeah, I don't care. I, any of them, any of them. I have a soft spot for ones that came out of the north or the west. Okay. Just because it's tough. We have 20-hour drives for every time. I hear guys complain a bitch about 10... Ten hours, man. That's a few cups of coffee for us. Dude. All right, do it all dude. Time. You know, I might think about it just for a day or two of yeah. fishing and then drive home. But it's so anyone from the north, any anybody from out west that that you know doesn't have the privilege of having all these lakes that you know ninety percent of the lakes we fish in their backyard or within hours. So they're just a little yeah. bit more relatable for guys like you and I. Yeah, probably, right. Yeah, yeah, a little tougher to get get out of the realm. You know, bass fishing in Minnesota is huge now, but it was a walleye state, so it's kind of like okay, to try to build up and come through. But yeah, definitely. I mean, Al Linder, Hank Parker. Oh one. man, Hank's that's cool. Really good. And all those guys, man, I just grew up, grew up watching every fishing show I possibly could. Same. And hear him today but man I, I, I'm just one of those dudes I, I just don't really have any hate for anybody anybody who's catching them and doing well and chasing what they love I'm going to support it every day you guys should follow that model <laughs> it's a good model to follow it is man it is. yeah it's just something about positive vibes right yeah. you surround yourself with that kind of energy yeah uh, it's amazing the people you draw around you yep yeah. like I think this weekend Exemplified that. Oh, for sure. Yeah, well, here in Florida, sure. I ain't having a good Great time with gay yeah. people. We had to sit through the worst DJ ever and just. No. Uh, <laughs> he gave everybody an opportunity, <laughs> so they all had to take it. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, right. Yeah. He sat there for about five hours. <laughs> yeah. It was a great five hours he was of a ham for the mic. You liked my it, goodness. All right, yeah, we got time for 18 more. <laughs> Anybody yeah. else? Who wants yeah. to talk? <sighs> yeah, I think they start serving liquor at these. Idaho ladies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But anyways, but Al Linder for me especially is probably top three. Yeah. Yeah. His uh, his whole scientific approach mm. to fishing, and I actually got to spend some time with him on the on my dream machine this year <coughs> on Malax. Yep. And it was such a surreal experience for me because I grew up watching in fishermen, and that same dude that I watched as a kid was literally the same dude mannerisms excitement level and all mm -hmm. on my boat and just hammering them and then the wind picked up and he's he's not a, a young buck anymore and he was in the back deck of my dream machine just surfing it and just whack oh he, he's big. been there before man. oh yeah no and he, he's whack and there's yeah. a big small mouth comes up and i'm like ah oh, what's your favorite fish man out of all the crazy stuff you've done Muskies. Smallies. Oh, really? That's what he said. He lit oh, up. Yeah. He did light up when we started talking muskies. I was say, them Linder boys like the muskies, Man, too. but that smallmouth uh, was special to him. Mm -hmm. And it was cool for me to be able to sit there and, like, just witness greatness no doubt. in action. And go back to his house. I stayed at the house. And that he's got... Experience. I got the, the yeah. dream experience. You're, uh, you know, you're yeah, making me did. jealous. I had none of that, yeah. dude. <laughs> well... Whenever I get time, we're gonna get that video edited and up on the on the YouTube channel for everybody yep. to kind of share that that experience with me. Awesome. Uh, but I got to go in his den, and he's got literally the entire encyclopedia of in fishermen. Oh, and I looked at the very first you know publication, like nineteen seventy something, mm -hmm. and it's straight. I got a couple. Of them. It's straight into the science. Mm -hmm. I mean, you talk about things we talk about now, and dude, those guys are way ahead of the curve. Way. Like, it's insane. Help, like, decide what lake, kind of lakes are out there as far as, like, you know, natural. It's all of them, you know. Oh, and they broke, I mean. They Highland reservoirs, all that. That's that was right. Them, man. Eutrophic yeah. lakes, non-fertile yep. lakes. I mean, yep. they went in on deep, mm -hmm. like deep. And I think it's funny now because you got a new generation that is ignorant to a lot of that they're ignorant to a lot of what's already been done ahead of them. Yep. By like guys like the Linders. Yep. And there's so many others that we oh, haven't even. Yeah, there's so and many. Who people else is on your list? You said Al was one of three. Oh, man, 
it's hard to think of right yeah, off the top of my you. head. There's a bunch of them, man. Yeah, but you know, same same thing. I watched everything I could. I could I consumed everything that I could that was fishing, especially coming out of like L.A. and California. Uh, all the TV show stuff was out of like the South, the Mid South, right? So, other than the fishing itself, like I didn't really have a way to relate mm -mm. to those guys. Mm -hmm. But I had a lot of respect for what they did. I could see past the fact that even though I might not have anything in common with them, the commonality of the love for fishing was enough for me to tune in yeah. and pay attention. Mm -hmm. I feel like we kind of don't get that same open-mindedness sometimes yeah. because of the fact that you're a northerner. Yeah, no doubt. Or I'm a west coaster. I'm yep. wearing a flat bill. Yep. Uh, this, that, and a third. And uh, all I ask is maybe people open up their minds to the potential that, man, we can all continue to learn off each other and 100%. share in that same passion and keep that positive vibe rolling. Yep, we're a collaborating generation, man. I'm that's telling you, it. That's power. That's, that's it, That's the man. power right there is just learning learning different things. And, you know, similar to you, 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 got, you guys are out there, super clear water, yeah. big Florida strains that eat trout. You don't find that nowhere else. You go up to Minnesota. Trying to, <coughs> Dude, trying to sometimes. Get, well, you know what I mean. But yeah, 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 yeah. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Just trying to it's back, not the norm. Back in the 90s and, and oh, you man. know, late 90s and, and early 2000s when I was digging through um, those publications trying to find stuff. In oh, Fisherman yeah. had something for me because they talk smallmouth. They talk northern largemouth. You know, we don't have I remember watching even Bassmaster and stuff, and they're talking about bang the ledges. And I'm like, I'm out there on a lake a natural lake trying to figure out what a ledge is and well they ain't there you know right. what i mean because it's it's a uh, we don't even have reservoirs right we don't have shad see we're reservoir you know? driven fish yep. or fisheries on the yep. west coast yeah so yeah it's crazy it, the infisherman influence really made me appreciate the multi-species type of angling like i think you guys see that like i enjoy yeah you took on to it a little bit more we have multi-species like crazy but we mm. usually start cussing and we start catching other things yeah. you know but no they're they're uh, i used to as well cool. yeah but man i'm just appreciative of every fish that bites one of my, my baits now especially on the tough days yeah i'm like oh thank you giant pike for yep. something today yeah, so that's good though that's yeah a, that's a that's a predator a, a, Predator fish out there. And dude, a big one is not easy to catch. No, no. A big like anything is not easy no. to catch. They're smart, man. They got big for a reason. For sure. Yeah. That's cool. Hey, shout you. out to Big Al. Yeah, yeah. Got any nicknames? <laughs> uh, <laughs> me? Fishing related <laughs> nicknames. But <laughs> well, geez. I don't know. JP, do I got a nickname? Dougie Fresh. Yeah, oh, Dougie, Dougie Fresh. Fresh. How, Dougie. how have I not heard Dougie no, Fresh? Oh, hang on a little more. You'll hear it. You'll hear it. Seth, JP, your buddy Figgy back home. Everybody just Dougie, Dougie. Okay. And Dougie Fresh for, for long, I guess. I like Dougie yeah. Fresh. I'd say that's it. Douglas, maybe. Where, where does that come from? from? Day? Uh, well, I mean, Dougie Fresh was a rapper from back in the day. Yeah. I, don't, you know, I don't remember. I mean, I'm sure I've heard he's a little stuff, bit but he's a little us. bit before my time. Yeah, yeah but at the same time... Uh, yeah, just whatever, you know. Always like to keep everything sharp, keep the wheels sure clean on the truck, it. all that stuff. Fighter coined it. Yeah, definitely. Fighter definitely coined that The one fighter man. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys dig through the YouTube channel, you can see him put a jerk bait in the back of my head. Yeah, we were just talking about that at breakfast today. <laughs> uh, I found it entertaining. <laughs> but that video didn't go quite viral like I was hoping it would at the time. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that's cool. Dougie Fresh. <laughs> All right. Here's a question for you guys. Now, especially for you, Bree, uh, mm -hmm. since you have such a heavy hand in the content generation, right? And actually, why don't you guys, why don't you tell us a little bit more about like what you guys are doing content-wise? Like, what platforms are you on? Are you doing video? Are you doing uh, photography? Are you doing instructional entertainment stuff? I mean, kind of all of the above is what we're going for, and this upcoming year we're going to push it even harder. But, I mean, in the past we've really kind of, you know, been focusing a lot on some of the more educational stuff and um, some of the lifestyle stuff and um, try to get the photography in there when we can and, you know, just try and keep everything relevant with this generation and try and not put out, you know, the content that everybody else is putting out, but something, you know, you gotta, you got to do something that keep yourself a little bit different from everybody else to give them a reason to watch you, otherwise it's all the same, yeah. you know? Yeah. 
Definitely. I think the con just content, bringing as much content. It's a video age. You can't never have enough of it anymore. But I think there's one key to, to ours is, is whether it's Fighter and I doing our webinars or it's a video that, that I did or something like that, we are giving it the way it is. You know, I, I, I'm a good fisherman. I get better every day. I'm going to continue to get better every day. So my job is to beat you no matter what, right? Yeah. But I can still teach people how to do things right. And that was my biggest thing growing up, obsessed with bass fishing and trying to get anything and everything I can. And then a lot of times you're only getting half truths, if even truths. You know what I mean? Like it's oh, yeah. hard to get that real deal content it was very sponsor driven very well now there's cameras in our boats all the time we got five of them in front of us right now right it's so easy to have cameras around with live and all that that you you can't hide it so you may as well just tell it like it is and i just think we get we might not have a hundred thousand followers on instagram and stuff but we have the right followers quality people, over quantity always you know? man and, and if, the, if you tell it like it is people believe what you're saying and then uh, it only helps, you know, we're sponsor-driven sports. It only helps your sponsors and all that if you're you're able to sell more, if you're, you know, have a reputation of being honest with people. And I think that's good. Plus, I think then you also learn other people's tricks. You know, yeah. if I tell you some of my tricks, I'm honest oh, with you, you're apt to give me some of yours back. The greatest pick, you know, little pieces of someone else's game and add it to their own oh, in, in any field. Yeah. Like nobody invents yeah. the wheel completely from yeah. scratch. Yeah. So we can comp absolutely learn and become better and, and bounce ideas off each other and test those hypotheses. And it's, right? a, it's in every sport. And you see a little bit in the tournament circuit right now, it's getting tough because you have information rules and how you handle that. And to a degree, you need those. To a degree, sometimes they're a little strong. Mm. It, it hinders that um, communication level sometimes. but. It, you nailed it right on the head in every single sport. I can remember when I was bartending. Cool story, dude. I, I was walking back to the bar, and I looked up, and Jerry Rice is sitting at my bar. No Jerry kidding. Jerry Rice is sitting at my bar, and I'm just like, you know, I've seen bartending and working in hotels back in the day. I, man, I met a lot with Jerry Rice. But he was there, and, and he was working out Larry Fitzgerald. He was here in town. He's, Jerry's well-retired. Fitzgerald lives right down the road in the Twin Cities and right there. Okay. And so he was in town getting them food, but he was there to teach Larry, who's already a phenomenal wide receiver, Hall of Famer wide receiver. He's got his own tricks, but Jerry's now there to teach him new tricks. And that is the, that's the key, man. That's Experience, man, mm -hmm. is huge. Yep. Because, I mean, someone like Larry is obviously talented. Oh, yeah. Right? He's got the tools. Yep. But he, he finds value in the experience. Yep. Of Jerry Rice, yeah. And I think that's something that's missing in this fishing game. There are guys out there with a lot of talent, a lot of raw energy and yeah. passion, and they feel like being able to give someone else respect and learn from them is like mutually exclusive from them establishing their own identity, yeah, and persona. Especially when you're young, because I, I can relate, because I, I remember oh, thinking that can, way for sure, hundred percent. Right? Like, oh, they need to know who I am, yeah. And instead of be like, man, I can. I just go fishing with Josh. I might learn how to use my craft a little bit better. I, I, you will learn something. I've learned something from every co-angler I've had in my boat. I don't care who you have in your boat that day. You'll either learn what to do or you'll learn what to <laughs> not to do. That's, that's as important that's as learning real. what to do. That's what real. Not, sometimes they might not teach you jump, but at the same time you learn something maybe you don't want to do. You know, <laughs> So you learn something every single day if you, if you keep your mind open. If you never accept that you're good, like I... It almost can be a humbling fault. I don't think I'll ever give myself the title that, that I'm fighting for every day. Nobody but likes self-appointed titles. Mm -mm. And, once, and I think once you think you're, you're there, or once you're you, done. You're, then, you're the then you down. stop learning. You That's stop it. learning. You start getting more stubborn, and then you're, you go down. So, so hopefully you keep that mind open and just keep. But it's passion, right? You just got to keep the passion. If the passion ain't there, then the work ethic doesn't follow it. Amen. Mm-hmm. That. Preach him. Tell him. <laughs> Tell him, Dougie Fresh. We almost punched your first slug button. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, that's like the third person that's wanted to punch me in the last few days because of those stupid slug buttons. I thought, I didn't even know that was still a thing. I don't know.
Uh, bringing it back. What is yeah. it? Sub them? You say the same thing, same time? Or yeah, what is it? Like oh, yeah. Button. They need to hit somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's all changed now. This is yeah. 2019. You can't punch people Kid, like that no more. Kids yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, people are too soft. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, what do you guys like better? Like that kind of content generation before, or after the onset of this social media age? Wait, what's the question one more time? So the the way that we create and distribute and consume content. Oh, sure. Right. Yep. Do you guys prefer the way it is now, after this social media, like push, or do you kind of like it the way it was before when it was like all TV and print? You still depends want me to take it? Depends on the day for me. Mm. Um. I am a big one for definitely like the social media age. Okay. It gives me the power as an angler. Oh. Okay. Because Talk about that dynamic. Well, okay. Well, here's one thing that I would say, and I get high school kids to my, my peers asking me, you know, how, how do you establish good sponsors? Well, two, one, be loyal. That's a big one. Mm. If you're jumping ship constantly, people are going to pick up on that. But the biggest one is if you have a social media account and you choose not to use it, if I'm a pro staff manager and I'm thinking about giving you baits or money or a fully wrapped rig, if you cannot promote yourself on your own platform, then why in the hell are you going to be able to push my baits? You're not. And so you have, we have the power now because before, back in the day, the guys that walked were fishermen before us, you needed, if you had a thing, you know, mega bass. If the mega bass would have to fly in a bunch of photographers, fly, get everybody scheduled together, it's a big money thing. Well, if you have the power to do it yourself, like yourself does, like I'm doing, the whole t hometown boy Brandon Pollinick can do. Yeah. If you have that there, then you, then your then the power is now yours. That you can you can take that. So I definitely like the age uh, where we are. You can keep constant content going out there. And as far as content, I think there's a hybrid now for both, right? So we got everything was the old school. This is what I'm using. This is the sunscreen I put on today. This is you know just plug plug the plug, hard plug, sell, plug. right? And then all of a sudden we got away from it. And we with the cameras again we got good with cinematic type stuff yeah. good edits high edits people started getting good well that was cool right that was selling and then the big push was subliminal be more subliminal be more subliminal right <laughs> exactly but at the same time you can also educate yes and have that high-end cinematic look and feel to your content but still teaching something that has substance and yeah. I think if, I think that's I think it's kind of a hybrid I think you need to take what the guys did before uh, what they're doing now and try to I agree come up with something good the way I feel is since those checks and balances and uh, those those filters mm -hmm. aren't in place anymore I feel like it's up to ourselves as creators to place them upon ourselves and put out substance and and content that matters yep mm -hmm. right instead of kind of like going the other route just for the sake of use and then I've unfortunately had to walk that tightrope sometimes just mm -hmm. to see what kind of mud will stick at the wall on the content generation. Every time I go down that route, uh, it really bothers me mm -hmm. as a creator because I want to do like this David Attenborough like yep. production because yep. nature is badass enough where it doesn't need no. all this crazy Hollywood drama, uh, you know, false narratives. And I feel fishing is the same. Yep. Fishing is dope. Fishing is dope. <coughs> by the hats. Fishing is um, dope. Yeah, by the hat. <laughs> and even when we had a reality show, like it was a full on Hollywood production, right? Mm -hmm. And even though we were unscripted reality, they, they are kind of pushing us to like embellish like the drama and like this, that, and the other. Give like, them the show. So. Yeah, like if we, you guys want us to be those clowns, like I'm sorry, I'm out. Like I'm not going to do it. Yep. I'm not going to do that to the to the fishing culture because I care about it too much. Like, I've fought really hard to like show people within my own circle mm -hmm. and just my social circle. Like, fishing isn't like for weirdos and losers and like it's not boring. No, it's not. If it's boring, it's because you suck and you're Everybody doing likes it wrong. to fish, man. At the end of the day, that's <laughs> right. That is right. <laughs> and you don't need to add drama. You don't need to. Dude, there's there's so much drama. The there's already a yeah. ton of drama, man, trying to get it in. And if you got the right look, and I mean, guys like you have been leading that way, pushing us as tournament anglers, too, to 
get with that kind of stuff and, and push that. But man, uh, my life is drama. Every time you're out fishing, it's 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 a drama when you do it for a living. You know. Yeah. I, and speaking, you know, with touching on that tournament stuff, I feel like there's almost a, a whole generation, maybe even two of them now, that don't see the value in what the tournament fishing scene brings to the fishing culture. Because mm -hmm. little did they know, you know, just going back 10 years, like that's how you had to make it. Oh, only way. In this game, mm -hmm. right? That may be a guide mm -hmm. or media side. Yep. And the fact that you had to fish your ass off and try to do your absolute best on the highest stages just to keep going and, and fulfill that dream of being a professional angler. Like, there are n very few things that have greater stakes. You know, mm -hmm. I think trophy fishing parallels that. Like the level of, like, man, I'm all in. Yeah, no doubt. So what you're doing on that stage should be much more valued than it is by the current like youngsters coming up. Huge. Instead of like, and and I see like some of the other stuff could be entertaining to them. I guess mm -hmm. uh, I can't knock people what people find entertaining, but the the context of it matters. Big time, mm -hmm. big time. And like, the credentials can matter. That's right, and that's where that body of work comes into play again. Yep. All right. Hundred percent. Like I want to see what like Josh is fishing out there. Yep. Not for the spot, but no. the reasoning of why you chose that spot and your plan of attack on how you approached it mm -hmm. and dissected it. Yep. That's the biggest thing. Like, like if you go on a guide, you can walk. I got a big rat boat on a wide open lake on Mille Lacs. When I guide, people can see me, no problem. They pull right up on me. They know I'm there. I don't really care. You know what I mean? Because. I, you you can you can take my spots till you're blue in the face. I've I've been given spots in tournaments before. It didn't work for me. It Dude, just rarely it, it does that never ever work. For me. And I watch people. You know, I can take somebody out fishing in in May, and we're gonna fish. You know, a little my little med rig or something in super shallow water. Well, then I see them there in August. Not a bass <laughs> there. You yeah. know what I mean? But it's it's just they don't spot. understand why. But if you can teach why you're moving around, what you're doing, uh, you know that that's the I think that's the key. Yeah, I think we need to help the people looking for information yeah. to start asking the right questions Big time. and understand why those yeah. are the right questions. Yeah. Not what color you're fishing, yeah. not what the spot is, yeah. so they can try and poach your spot. If you're a spot chaser, like, man. You're not going to be fishing for a long time. No, no, no. You're, you're not going to be catching. You might be fishing, yeah. you ain't going to be catching. And, and you know, a little different when, when we were kids, we didn't have immediate access by DMing another pro. I couldn't ask them where their spots are. I couldn't ask them what baits. Yeah. You know, I, I can remember one time Ken Cook had an email on his, like an actual physical email on his website, and I sent him an email and said, man, I just want to do what you do. And he got back to me. You know how much that resonated through my career, oh, like what sure. he told me to do? And That's all dope, that? man. It is. And, and I, but now people can ask, you know, they can just DM me, and kids are brave now. Oh, dude, they're up, too brave oh, sometimes. Yeah, but... I'll answer the one. I'm nice to everybody. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to answer anyone that's in my fan base. That's right, man. But if people are asking me the right questions, yeah, I'm more apt to give them a long, with longer explanation they probably ever would have expected. Yeah, me to give them. But if it's just a hey, what spot do I fish and what color bait and which one do I throw? Yeah. Then it's more of a well, you know, that's not gonna help you too much. I don't no. think. You yeah. know, if you want that, I'm six hundred bucks. That's all right. Oh, it should be more. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole other discussion. <laughs> but yeah, so kudos to you for keeping that tournament culture alive. Yeah, uh, I have so much respect for what you do. Obviously, Brandon, Carl, and all the yeah. other guys that I have a relationship with on on all the major tours. It, it matters, man. Like that context is everything. Yeah. So like when people ask me why don't I go to like Mexico to fish for a giant bass. Well, it's because of the context. Like, it's not the same. True. No, as no. fishing in public lake trophies in, or, in the or States. Or a private pond here. It's just not the same. And I literally yeah. don't fish anything private, and I'm not knocking it, right? It can no, be fun. No, that, yeah. But the context isn't the same. It doesn't challenge me. Even though it can be challenging, just the fact that those fish don't see the same uh, pressure potentially mm -hmm. as a private lake that everybody has access to yep. that changes the behavior of those fish you know and and everybody wants something different out of fishing that's, and that's right. okay that's right that's cool 
you know, for me, the tournament fishing is just because I'm competitive and I like to tournament yeah. fish, and that's what I like to do. But it, it's a dogfight of a lifestyle. I oh, mean, yeah. it is a up and down. You better be good with losing, and you better learn how to have a short memory and move on. But not everyone needs to tournament fish. I do it because it's what I love to do. It also gives me credentials. So when I do talk, I at least have a little bit of merit, a little bit of something there for people. It'll just help you grow grow your cause. But yeah. in this day and age, you don't need you don't need to do that because like I said before, you can never fish a tournament and I'll still learn something from you. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you this, in this sport, accessibility to the highest levels can be tough. There's a lot of anglers out there that have families, jobs that pay them a hundred grand, good things going for them that could definitely compete on the biggest stages in the world but will never see that that day. Yeah. So you just because just somebody doesn't tournament fish doesn't mean that they that they're not a good fisherman. No, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? It does. It, it just literally doesn't matter, right? It's just if you put out good content, and you're teaching people what's going on. You have a voice in the, in the fishing world, for sure. Well, shout out to you for helping countless right people. Back at you, dude. Man, right it, back at you. It's that that info is hard, harder, right? And especially our generation and back. Yep. Like, dude, it's a very hush kind of culture. No doubt. Like, bro, I just spent this much money. My freaking mom is pissed off because, like, I'm never <laughs> home. And I put myself in some shit just uh -huh. to be in that position to learn how to trigger that extra bite. Yep. Like, why do I owe you anything mm -hmm. is kind of how I used to feel. Mm -hmm. But being able to be part of someone's experience where they caught the biggest fish of their life is incredibly rewarding for me now. Yeah. Oh, it's like the it's, best, man. It's cool, man. I did. Because early on, like, I didn't get to live all those experiences yet. So thankfully I've had some incredible experiences under my belt, but now I see the value in that and helping share that mm -hmm. and promote that. And it just makes it harder for people to be assholes. Yeah, no doubt. No, no. Because there's plenty of those still out there. Oh, yeah. There always will be. Mm -hmm. No doubt. No just, doubt. Catch, just catch more fish, guys. Dude. Yeah. It's not that hard. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but thus far, Dougie Fresh, what are you most proud of in your fishing career? Um, hmm. And that might not be a fair question because I feel it's like you're just getting started. Yeah, man. It's I man. I hope I got a big long career ahead of me. A lot of cool things. Definitely taking a top ten this year at the Cup. I finished ninth, the Forest Wood Cup. Thank you. It was a big cup because last year I technically made it and then got disqualified at St. Clair. I had the wrong fishing license. Oh, I, I remember I that. I didn't realize. I, I had a Canadian. I had the right one. I did everything. I never realized that there was a conservation and a, and a sportsman. I didn't see the difference. I didn't catch them. So I had the right days. I, I They knew it was a, a rough deal. And I saw uh, Ontario coming, Ontario DNR, whatever they are, coming through the float Zillow boats at St. Clair. I had 22 pounds in the live well. It was like noon on the second day. I'd already, FLW was already there congratulating me for making a cut in my second year, all that. And then all of a sudden they stopped me and figured out I had the wrong license, made me throw 22 pounds back. And then Bill Taylor disqualified, asked me, you know, where did I fish the day before? I said, I made all my casts in Canada. And I was disqualified, man, and it sucked. It was terrible. So this year to come back after that, it, it sucked. But, dude, that was the biggest day in my career, though, because I knew I could do it. Yeah. Like, nobody can take that from right. me. Right. I knew right then and there that I had the chops to do it. And that's all I needed. So the little light chip on my shoulder this year, we went out there and wrecked them and did it and then took top ten in the cup and got to get rid of some demons that were fighting me and, that, and all well that. Done, so, yeah, dude. It's some, that, that's that one's definitely... It's big to bounce back from yeah. something like that. I'd say my other one was the day she left her corporate job. She, oh. she worked for U.S. Bank. She had a corporate job. We wouldn't see each other for a month or two at a time sometimes. Just running around, blowing money, trying to trying to fish. Yeah. And we got, we built this thing up, we built this career up in this company and our, what we do, enough for her to leave a, a pretty decent paying corporate job to roll around. And, and we ain't rich at all, you know, we're-, we're You're really, rich in experience, man. We are, man. We, we get to be with each other every single day. We get to take cool trips. And, and so those two are probably the best two days of my fishing career so far. Awesome. So, Bree, thus far in your involvement in your fishing <laughs> career. In your fishing career. In my, yes, my, yeah. yes, my What are you career. most proud of so far? Um, oh, so my career, not of his career. Correct. Oh, gee. Well, I mean, I guess, I don't know. I, 
I guess just, you know, what I've been able to kind of learn and pick up on my own, because I am a one-woman fishing or production team, basically. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, I'm sure you know, in, in this industry, a lot of people don't always like to give up their secrets. So it's just like fishing. Yeah. So Harder. you can't, I mean, I really appreciate the people that have taken the time to, you know, educate me on stuff. And, but you know, I've, I've kind of had to learn a lot of it on my own and make a lot of mistakes on my own and things I'm not going to do again. And, um, but yeah, just, you know, being able to, you know, kind of do that to myself and, you know, teach myself where it comes. Self growth. Huh? Yeah. 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 It's incredible that these journeys like teach you about yourself. Oh, yeah. And he pushes me all the time. Some, I mean, probably too much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have days where I'm like, Dude, no, really, get the net. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I want her. I want her to have eight different camera angles all the time. She's like, of I course. Want camera. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh. Didn't he give yeah. me the drone and the underwater yeah. shot at the same time? Oh, yeah, what the? Come on. Yeah. Come on, Wonder Woman. Yeah, but um. But yeah, we make it work. We're a good team, and um, we've—I mean—we've come a long way. We went from basically going in our relationship, you know, him, me working corporate, him being gone all the time, needing, you know, just kind of living that life of us being apart all the time, mm -hmm. to literally being together all the time. I don't know how you guys do it. I mean, it, it, it took about, <laughs> it took about a year. You know, I don't know why there. <laughs> I mean, you, Brandon, Carl, you guys especially all do it really yeah. well. Yeah. Especially when someone's got a potty every 10 miles down going down the road. <laughs> and then once she goes, then the dog's got to go uh, at the next exit. Yeah. We get nowhere fast. We've gotten way. real good at side right. of the road peeing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> but yeah, it's all about efficiency. Know. Yeah, That's major. Cool. Right. Very cool. Well, <laughs> if there's something that you could tell a younger Bree or a younger Dougie Fresh, uh, one thing, what would that piece of advice be? Uh, you get one life, live it, man. Whatever it is you want to do, whatever your passions are. Um, I've seen just way too many people not follow their passions in life. And, uh, I, you know, if it's money, I, if whatever, whatever it is, just, just chase it. You know, if it's worth chasing, then go for it because dreams come true, man. They really do. If if, if the eight year old me could see me right now, I already made it. Yeah. But I will never think that way now. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's always, you know, you, you continue to. Evolve. I remember I wanted to check in an open. I got to check. Then okay, now I'm on top ten. Then I got top ten. Kept going. Now it's just I got to win. I got to make a classic. Oh, you know, I'm always gonna push that. But looking back yeah. to be able to sit here with you right now talking to people and like anyone even cares i already won man that's that's i think that's pretty cool so i just tell anybody no matter what your passions are if they're worth chasing chase them so you're saying i could probably still catch a three pound crappie yeah you, you definitely can, can. sure i bet that's can go hang out sam that. rayburn yeah. i think they got something down there boys <laughs> Oh, oh, oh! Spotburn. Um, but yeah, I guess I, I kind of just want to second what he has to say. You know, just follow your passion. I can remember days. You know, we always dreamed of this life. We've talked about it for a really long time, and I can remember sitting in my cubicle, miserable, ticked off, not wanting to take that one more phone call of that person who's complaining to me on the phone about whatever, and just thinking to myself like. One day, this is just going to be a blip on the radar. Mm -hmm. well, and it, it is now. It was probably a means to an end, too, right? Oh, it was a total... It took us... Once we figured out where we were, you know, what we really wanted to do, it was it was three years of both of us just really working, dedicating it, not having a life, not going out, paying what? off all There's of our sacrifice bills. Oh, man. Like every day so planning and sacrifice. That's not how yeah. this works, right? I know, you know, I know. Being, being young, being in our early 30s, stuff like that at the time, trying to make this all make this all happen mm -hmm. and I can't and, and the sacrifices that you do you know you all your friends are out having a good time getting drunk and that's 60 bucks but that, that'll get you to the lake you know and it's stuff like that and you, you got you got to know I mean in this sport if you come with credit cards blazing you're going to get eaten up and thrown out in a quick quick hurry it's like trying to go to the casino when you're when you're past due on your rent to make your rent you ain't never going to make your rent you know, yeah. but you just got a raise. You go to the casino, you win thousand bucks. It's just how how the game works. Mm -hmm. Just establishing and working things together definitely a big deal. Mm -hmm. Good That's advice. Good. I would have liked to meet a younger version of you two. <laughs> that would have been fun. Ditto. 
Oh, that was a real piece of crap. Yeah, <laughs> we all were. We all, <laughs> all right, well, at the end of it all, when they write the book on the Douglases, the Douglases fresh, mm-hmm. uh, what kind of legacy do you guys want to leave behind? Um, just, you know, that we... I don't know. You go. <laughs> I just want to. I just want to be known as a good person, man. I don't know what. I have expectations. I don't know if I'll ever hit any of them. And if I do, like I said, I'll just keep raising the bar. Yeah. So at the end of the day, man, I just want to be known as a good guy, just a good person that gave back because so many people. I mean, gave me so many opportunities. I can't tell you. People ask all the time, "How did you get here?" I don't know. Like one thing happened, then another thing happened, then another thing happened, and you just have to be willing to work with a lot of people and, and all that, but if, if I so many people put me here today, so many people will put me to where I'm gonna go, yeah. that if I can just be known as a guy that gave that back, I think I'm happy. Well, I do cool one of those me. DMs that you put out there and webinars and mm-hmm. all that stuff you're doing, the content you guys are generating is definitely pushing that way. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So mm-hmm. well done. Well, well, you you gonna, you gonna you dodge the question or? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, I just don't want to put out there. I mean, just you know, be a good person, be true to yourself, and you know, just make sure that whatever you do, that you're doing what you want to do to the fullest, and not what other people you know are expecting of you. And you know, just put out all the love that you can, and take all the love back that you can get. You know. Awesome. And I'll never forget you guys on the dance floor last night either. So oh, jeez. Mm, no, Give me some whiskey and my only goal. Hip hop and <laughs> I stepped on her toes about eight times in one hey, conversation. If you guys didn't know, they keep it hood <laughs> out of the Twin Cities. This girl <laughs> right here is a G. Oh, she is. Oh, yeah. I, was, I, was I had no form. idea. I was in rare form. We've been together a long time. I was like 19 or 20. She was 18. She mm-hmm. used to roll around with me with a car that barely ran, but I had subwoofers as ah. <laughs> more, more rims and subwoofers I more some, than the whole car was. Some prepared. of our West Coast was, was bumping oh, all yeah. those subs for oh, sure because yeah. I saw it come out oh, last yeah. night. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had a little West Coast gangster boogie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it was a fun night. Very fun night. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys for uh, joining us on this Big Bass Dreams podcast. And special shout out to our man, Blake Becker, for once again letting yeah, us man. use awesome uh, shop. Thank you guys. Awesome shop. This amazing shop in Coeur d'Alene. In Idaho, who knew they even had tackle shops like this in the Pacific Northwest, huh? So good job, man. You've been uh, doing a good job and just pushing the bass fishing culture up here. Uh, so make sure you guys follow both Blake. Where can they find you guys? Uh, I'm Instagram and Facebook. I'm the Fisherman's Widow. I am on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Josh Douglas Fishing. Rad. So definitely check us out. Follow us. Uh, you can follow back, all that kind of good stuff. But mm-hmm. thanks for having us on, dude. Yeah, thank you. This is great. Big fan for a long time. Oh, come on, man. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Yeah. All right, let's yeah. go party. Yeah, let's yeah. definitely go party. <laughs> so if you guys haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, download the podcast, leave a comment, hit the like button. Uh, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. See you guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You guys excited to be here? <laughs>